obesity and health is really high up the agenda. People have become aware that being overweight isn't just about what you look like, but what concerns me and a growing number of people is that your weight is such a strong predictor of your health in later life. Hello, I'm uh, Susan Jebb and I'm Professor of Diet and Population Health here in the Department of Primary Care Health Sciences at the University of Oxford. So my personal interest is in how what we eat affects our health and that matters to all of us. Perhaps increasingly as we get older, when we're young, I'm not sure we worry that much about our health, but we know the early origins of many diseases are, are sown by the food we eat as children partly because those habits are very persistent and hard to change. So we know that being seriously overweight substantially increases your risk of developing something like type 2 diabetes. Um, and there are millions of people already in Britain who suffer from diabetes. And that's affecting their lives as individuals. It impacts on their families. But of course, it's also impacting on the NHS. So we all have an interest, actually, in everybody else's health particularly in the UK where we have a publicly funded healthcare system. There's absolutely no doubt that the prevalence of obesity, the proportion of people who are overweight or obese, is going up year on year. Why is that? That's the tricky bit. For sure, compared to, say, 50 years ago, we are a lot less physically active. Um, if we think there are very few manual occupations left, most households have a car, sometimes two cars, so our transport choices use far less energy, personal energy, than they, they used to do. Um, and even in terms of leisure activities, a lot of that is dominated by screens, whether it's watching televisions or, or computers and the like. Um, so for children, I think that the travel issue is, is a really big one. Um, most children today will be driven to school, either by parents, friends or, or the bus driver. Um, if you go back just a generation, most children were still walking to school. And that's an opportunity for physical activity, which essentially has been, has been lost. Um, and there's far less playing outside. Um, we're much more likely, when you know, my son goes round to his friends, they're much more likely to play um, indoors on some often electronic games than they are to go and kick a football outside. One way or another, physical activity has somewhat disappeared from our lives. So the only people who now are physically active are people who really go out of their way to put activity back. They choose to cycle, or at the weekends as a family, they specifically do something active perhaps go to the swimming pool rather than go to the cinema as a, as a family activity. So declines in physical activity undoubtedly are important. But in recent years in particular, I think there's growing recognition that the way we eat has changed. The type of food we eat has changed. And that many of those changes are putting us at greatly increased risk of obesity. So the food tends to be very energy dense. It's got a lot of calories in every bite, effectively. Um, you know, it, it's, it's pretty hard to overeat on broccoli. Um, there's not many calories in, you know, you'd have to work your way through a, a wheelbarrow full of the stuff. Um, whereas very, very easy to overeat on chocolate because chocolate's very energy dense and broccoli isn't. Um, it's, it's also about the availability of food. You know, the idea of three meals a day pretty outdated in one respect. People are eating multiple times a day. But the problem is they're still having those three meals and they're having all sorts of other things as well. So the frequency of eating has increased and that's prompted by sheer availability, accessibility of food. We're pretty surrounded by food most of the day. Endless opportunities to eat. And those opportunities all act as prompts. It's not about ravenous overeating. It's about those small differences, day in, day out, which over months, years, a lifetime, add up to a serious weight problem. So why aren't we better at controlling our intake? One of the fallacies is that this is just down to willpower. If you were just more strong-minded, you'd be able to uh, make the right choices and, and control your weight. And the problem is that totally ignores our underlying biology. If we think about the way we live today, it's been a blink of an eye in evolutionary um, terms. 
And if we think about how we've evolved, we have evolved in a world where food was scarce, and where the energy that you needed to invest to get that food was very high. You had to go chasing after your woolly mammoth or, or whatever. And so our bodies are designed to be as efficient as possible, to conserve calories. Um, and certainly, when they see easy calories available, to eat them. Why on earth wouldn't you see food and eat it? Because historically, there might be a famine next week, next month, next year. And the people who actually did take on that extra food when it was available, who built up some body stores, were the people who survived through the famine. And so our genes have evolved to protect um, those processes which store fat. That was great historically, but in a world where the environment has changed so dramatically, where there is for most people, an excess of food available, certainly here in the UK, our biology is just working against us. And I think we can see that um, in a very real world examples. It's something that in science we call the asymmetry of appetite, meaning the, the differences in appetite. So on the one hand, if you feel um, a little bit hungry, that's quite a distracting thought. You find it hard to concentrate on what you're doing because there's just a niggling feeling that you're a bit hungry and generally we'll go off in search of food. So very quickly, our bodies sense we're short of food and we take steps to correct that. In contrast, our sense of satiety, of fullness, is incredibly weak and very, very easily overridden. So let's imagine we go out to dinner with friends, you get to the end of the main course, you feel comfortably full. You're not hungry, actually you feel quite full. If our biology was working really well and helping us, those satiety signals, the fullness signals, would be so strong that when pudding came along you'd say, no, I couldn't possibly eat that, I'm full. But nine times out of ten, what happens is we say, oh, I could just manage a little bit more. Because the fullness signals are weak and they're easily overridden. So that leaves us in a position where our biology makes it easy for us to overeat, but really, really hard to undereat. And again, that works against us in a world where food is abundant, accessible, relatively cheap, and, and highly desirable. I'm constantly challenging people not to ask the question, why do people become overweight? It seems to me very obvious, but rather to ask the more challenging question of how do some people actually stay slim in the modern environment when all of the odds are stacked against them, their biology is against them, and the environment is against them. And that becomes really quite an interesting question. I think this concept of a healthy weight is a really, really important one. All too often I hear people you know, talking about the, the need to lose weight when they're already a perfectly healthy weight. It's incredibly important that people don't perceive that the healthiest weight is the thinnest weight. It isn't. It's much more in, in, in the, the middle of the, the range. And secondly, when we talk about healthy weight, that means also implicit in there is about eating a healthy diet and having a healthy level of physical activity. So where I do get very anxious is when people think that they will control their weight simply by eating less. Then they have no energy to be physically active. And, and being somebody who's totally sedentary and eating like a sparrow is not a healthy weight. We need to get a much better, more rounded sense of what we mean by health, what we mean by a healthy weight. If people are trying to control their weight, it's clear that they need to take some, some conscious control. They need to develop specific strategies which are going to help them to eat less. And very often that involves identifying those times or those um, situations in which you're particularly prone to overeating. For some people that can be a really, really important issue. There are many people um, who tell me that their um, relationship with food is very influenced by their emotional well-being. People who feel very upset may, may turn to food as a source of comfort. People who feel very stressed might actually feel better when, when they've had something to eat. And those two traits are going to impact on how easy it is for people to control their weight. So I think it is very helpful sometimes for people to keep a food diary, not only of what they eat, so you can reflect on that a little bit, but also the context in which that eating is happening. 
because being aware of what's prompting you to make um, some choices is often the first step in changing those, those choices. And sometimes actually tackling your weight is not to do directly with tackling food, it's about tackling another issue in your life which in itself is, is leading into poor eating habits. Sometimes it's more important to focus on the underlying issue than it is, it is just on food. And that's why I think for people who are in the situation of actually needing to control their weight because they have an established weight problem, it is really important to get some professional support, some professional help, uh, rather than people, if you like, self-imposing dieting. For most people, just being conscious of not gaining too much weight and of maintaining the weight they are by choosing a healthy diet, by being physically active, is actually the most important thing to do. Um, most people are not obese. We hear so much about obesity, it's tempting to think it affects all of us. It doesn't. Certainly for young people, most young people have a perfectly healthy weight. What's important is that they stay there and that they don't drift into weight gain as, as they get older. It's about establishing those healthy habits which will protect your weight in later life. And I think that's the most important message uh, for people to focus on today. Okay.